Hello, test one, two. I hope my audio is coming through. Please let me know in the chat, uh, in Discord, in YouTube, by Carrier Pigeon, Smoke Signal, however you could possibly reach me. Please let me know. Apologies for all the stops and starts today. I will be beginning in just a few minutes, assuming my audio is coming through loud and clear. Okay. See you in a moment.
Hello, happy Saturday. <laughs> Welcome to the coding train with me, minor internet personality, Dan Shipman. I am the host of the coding train. I'm com coding train. I am coming to you live. <coughs> I don't know, it's some kind of miracle that I'm here right now. Uh, I don't know how <laughs> this is going to last. Uh, I better just very quickly say thank you to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's live stream. You can get access to all of the documentaries, amazing documentaries on Curiosity Stream, as well as the Nebula, everything that's on Nebula. Can I tell you about something that's on Nebula right now? Let me tell you something that's on Nebula right now. Hold on a sec. Uh, on Nebula right now is, let's go to my library right here. Look at this. This particular video, which is going to come out probably, hopefully, by tomorrow on YouTube. Still finishing it up, but if you want to get some early access to this particular video, along with all sorts of other amazing stuff, you could get, you could sign up the whole year of Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Um, at that link, 26% off. I think that's $14.79 for the whole year. Amazing, amazing. You should totally check out all the documentaries and all of the YouTube creators that are on uh, Nebula. Okay, uh, <laughs> the stream's still working, so at least I got that out. Um, and what am I here to do today? Well, if you might remember, a week or so ago, and I'm look, just checking the chat here to see if people are watching. Uh, I'm not seeing any messages, which is a little bit weird if I'm being perfectly honest. So hopefully I'm not just speaking into a vacuum. But um, I've been working on a project <coughs> to create an autoencoder using JavaScript with the TensorFlow JS library, library in Node.js. And um, I would like to finish that today. So this is part two. Um, if you were looking for part one, if I come back to here, I really don't see any chat messages. This is very strange. Code Menelik says, hi, I'm Garth Waves. Okay, people are there. You're there. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Not very many of you, probably, because I've totally botched this in the sense that I was supposed to stream this morning at 10 a.m. And I had scheduled it. I'm using Discord events now, so you should sign up for the Coding Train Discord. Somebody post that link into the chat. Um, and then I make an event, and you know what time, and you can like register your interest, and you'll get a reminder. All the things I've always been wanting for, wanting to have. And then I was like, no, I can't stream because my internet wasn't working. I am in a garage, which is a detached garage from my main house, which is where my new studio is. And I'm going to be here all the time, every day, all day, starting in January 2022. Lots of plans. Um, so I'm working on getting this place wired and uh, powered by solar energy. <laughs> so uh, uh, I disconnected. Uh, now when I say I, I'm uh, obviously hired people to do a lot of this work. But the uh, electri electrics was disconnected to this building and then a a, we dug a trench to wire electrics to the house so they could put solar panels here to power the house and the garage, ran coax and a cat5 underground, uh, put it in a splitter so I can have internet in both. And for whatever reason, I can't get internet in both to work. And I discovered that if I just turn off the internet to the house right now, it seems to work here in the garage. So that's my temporary solution, at least for today, to get this live stream in on Saturday, November 20th, and finish off this project. Ah, I was trying to fig find where it, I, was, I was here to show you uh, part one. So this doesn't say part one, but you can see, oh, and look at this. <laughs> so this is also, by the way, available here. I just haven't released it yet. It should be out. Um, tomorrow. I've just got a lot of slowness here, but I'm logged into my account, which is why I see it. Um, I'm very excited about this video. Can you please post the Discord in the chat? All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that, um, since uh, no one else got around to it just yet. And I believe that should be, oh my god, <laughs> I posted the wrong link. Uh, Discord.gg. <laughs> uh, 
OK. Um, it's discord.gg slash coding train. OK. So um, what was I looking for? Oh, so that's part one. If you watch part one, great. You're in the right place. If you didn't watch part one, well, I'll recap it a little bit <laughs> as I get into um, um, working on the project. So I need to find my way back to where I was before. Let me open up processing. Because I was using processing to generate the images that I want to um, use to train the model. And I need to, I don't need this. And I need to get, um, all right, let me just switch myself back over here while I am getting various windows set up. So um, uh, let's see. Um, talk amongst yourselves for a minute, please. <laughs> You know, normally you would think I would have this all set up before I begin streaming. I don't know why I'm hiding this from you. I'm just opening up um, uh, so I, um, on my iTerm. And I think the project is in the autoencoder, TF demo. Let's open this up in um, <coughs> in Visual Studio Code. All right. OK, let's go back to um, the auto encoder Keras page, which is sort of my a model, my tutorial that I am following. And uh, <laughs> hi, Bruno. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Embarek. Hi, Sorel. I'm seeing some nice messages in the chat. Welcome. A bunch of people are joining in. That's great. Um, so what do I, how am I going to get started here? So first, let's see if my whiteboard is still working. Oh, looks like I need to work on the focus there. And wow, it's so, I think it's brighter in here today. The sun is out. Um, so I do get some sunlight in this room. So first thing I need to do is fo focus this camera. I think that's better, right? I think I just focused it. Uh, let me go back and look here. Looks better. Yeah, that looks like it's in focus now. Oh, and I need to, ah, uh, ah. Uh, OK, hold on, everyone. <laughs> I'm going back to here. I also want to record this session to disk just in case the thought experiment is, you know, do you really later, if you're not here live with me right now, part of the process of figuring it out together, would you really want to come back and watch four hours of live streaming about building an autoencoder project? Maybe, but my thought is if I can get everything recorded to disk, then perhaps I can succinctly package this in like a 30 to 45 minute video, which skips a lot of the rambling and all that kind of stuff. So let me, uh, I need to, <laughs> I'm kind of like shocked that I'm doing this because as of this morning, I was like, I'm just going to reschedule this to like November 30th. So I just need to check my settings here, um, output. Streaming, recording, indistinguishable quality, large file size. Well, no wonder high quality, medium file size. I forgot that I'd done this. Start recording. So I recorded last session to disk. And I looked at the file afterwards, and it was 57 gigabytes. Because <laughs> I'm recording a 4K uh, video to disk, which has all of the different, it has um, just the laptop feed. It has me, actually me just with the green screen, um, and it has the whiteboard. Uh, if I had the iPad here, I have a iPad a hookup, but it's not hooked up right now. So um, this is my new setup. I'm obviously still trying to build up momentum. Thank you to everybody's patience, kindness, and consideration as I try to figure out. I feel like the coding train is going to be born anew in 2022. That rhymes, which is quite lovely. OK, I've got a little bit of coffee left. Um, I've got to get back to my children, but I'm giving myself till 3.30. It's 90 minutes. I'm recording to disk. Um, and thank you to all of your, um, thank you, Sorel. You are here with me. Mwah, I appreciate it. All right, little straw poll here. I'm going to put a little straw poll into the chat. Um, did you watch part? One, just to give me a sense of who watched part one. I can't see, by the way, who's answering. So you know, it's not like 
you know, did you study for the test and you don't want to admit it? Like, I would like to know the real information here. So uh, in the chat now should be a poll asking whether you watched part one or not. And as I kind of get, um, let's just see if things are still working here. It looks good. Um, I'm just sort of checking out my code from before. Still seems to be running. Um, that's fine there, but this iTerm needs to be oh, a little bit more over. Ah, come on, iTerm. Why do you do me like that? Okay, I think that should be good. And then processing. I don't actually know that I'm even going to need. Oh, I, I actually will want this for sure. I just realized. Okay. Um, I also remember um, K. Weekman. <laughs> How would you like to be referred to? I, I do it all sorts of different ways. Um, but I remember you saying that um, I should reconsider maybe the optimizer or the loss function I'm using. Um, so again, the, my, my sort of working sort of uh, the, the working philosophy here right now is just to get all the pieces plugged in and then I want to add more layers and sort of think more thoughtfully about the various hyperparameters of the system that I'm building and then also hook it up to P5 so I can see the results in the browser. <laughs> oh, by 3.30 today, no problem. There's probably going to be a part three, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, but um, I seem to recall you had left some comments in the Discord um, so I, let me make sure I come back and revisit that, although maybe I'm not going to right now. I am seeing the poll results that 60% uh, of you, 73 people have voted, 61% of you have did not watch part one, and 39% of you did watch part one. So I think this means, uh, this swings the pendulum for me. I'm going to give you a quick recap of kind of everything I did <laughs> in part one. <laughs> And let's, um, let's put a timer on here. Let's time box this. 10-minute uh, timer. So I don't want to allow myself more than 10 minutes. Where? Oh, what's? I'm using up so much of my time just to put this in the page here. OK. OK. So there's my 10 minute timer. I don't want to, uh, I want to be starting on the new stuff by the time that hits zero. Okay, um, so <clears throat> quickly, I am very interested in machine learning, generative machine learning models. Models that generate synthetic images, text, perhaps sound, other kinds of media. Uh, if you have been following the world of deep learning today, the, what you probably have heard of is something like, oh, a GAN or StyleGAN or StyleGAN2 or StyleGAN3. And then there's this like latent space. Oh, all these images are in the latent space and I can walk through the latent space. And look at this AI is dreaming about cats in a StyleGAN2 latent space of all cats, cats, and many more cats. If you have no idea what any of that means, how could you possibly get started to learn some of the vocabulary, feel comfortable with working with these systems, even if you're ultimately just an end user of pre-trained models, um, you're not designing and training the models yourself. For me, the process of me trying to sort out how all this stuff works and understand, be able to read the StyleGAN paper and maybe understand a bit more about it, begins with autoencoders. Um, an autoencoder is, a very simple, um, well, I, don't, I, don't, I shouldn't say very simple because none of this is particularly simple, but it is a good starting point to think about how generative models work. And I, the last live stream, I went through building this whole diagram to talk about how we could build something called a copying machine out of a neural network. So if an image is sent into the neural network, if we could just get that same image back out, then somehow, the neural network would have learned some type of like represent, internal representation of that image in a way that it can reproduce it. So obviously to copy an image is a simple, well, <laughs> this is a simple process with an algorithm. I can just say for every pixel, make a new image, take an existing image for every pixel, put the new pixel in the new image. 
So the autoencoder is not an efficient copying machine, but it does give us this ability to uh, copy the image while also compressing the data. Because the idea is if we start, if I have a 28 by 28 image with 784 pixels, as the data moves through these layers of the neural network, we have fewer, like I have 784 inputs, the first layer might only have half of that in neurons, and then another layer might have half of that. And then, so these numbers have to somehow be compressed into a smaller amount of numbers that then get expanded back out to the original image. So this is like a copying machine and an image compression engine. It is not an efficient image compression engine, <laughs> because if we really want to do image compression to save high resolution image with less file space on, a, on our hard drive, we could just use JPEG or other kind of known tried and true image compression algorithms. But if we are able to take the, uh, these images, compress them down, and have the neural network, the autoencoder, learn how to uh, decode them, right? We have an encoder and a decoder. Then at some point, and hopefully I'll get to this part today, I can take off, after I've trained it, I can take out the encoder and just start with the decoder, feed in noise, and generate new images in the style of the original training data set. Or I could do certain kinds of operations like image denoising. For example, what if I sent a noisy image in, right? If these are all, um, the, the example I'm using is I'm just using geometric shapes. So if the autoencoder learns the internal, an internal representation of what it means to render a square, if I send in a noisy square, it will then take that and in theory, re-render it back out without the noise. That's the idea. So this is what I'm working with. I went through this diagram I, uh, probably in a much longer period of time, and then, um, looked at, if I come back over here, um, and uh, I see some comments, so hold on, I'll come back over here. Now, uh, and I've still got five minutes left in my recap of before. Um, <clears throat> and if I come back here, uh, what was I trying to say? Francois Cholet, yes, okay. So this is an article from 2016, so quite a while ago, where I first encountered the idea of an autoencoder, uh, this encoder and decoder, this original input, compressed representation, reconstructed input, the output is the reconstructed input, um, and there is sort of a guide here, an explanation, as well as a guide for how to build these layers using a library called Keras, which was a sort of higher level, which is, I, some, I should know this, maybe somebody in the chat could, could kind of explain, but like, does Keras still exist, or is it really just now fully integrated into TensorFlow and not called Keras anymore? But when Keras was first developed, it was a kind of higher level layer, if you will, above lower level machine learning libraries. So you could say things like, create a neural network with this kind of architecture, in Keras in a sort of higher level way, and you could plug TensorFlow into it to do the actual lower level implementation or PyTorch or other ones. So the way I know and work with Keras is uh, by working in uh, TensorFlow.js, which I want to look at the, um, this is, I want to, I think it's just like js.tensorflow. Um, let's see if this, yeah, um, and I want to go to the API. Um, th in the TensorFlow.js API, there is a particular uh, set of functions, objects, that are part of the uh, layers, that are called layers, tf.layers, layers model, sequential, uh, layers, here we go. Um, and this is, a net, this is essentially the uh, original, the modeled after or directly ported from the Keras Python library. Oh, I hear somebody. Hello. <laughs> Take a short intermission. I've got a, I've got a visitor. <laughs> I'll be right, be right back. I'm just putting on intermission and I'll be right back. Music.
<laughs> okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> oh, 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 I need to stretch. All right. Um, <laughs> I disconnected the internet in the house, which is causing some some problems. But we're gonna we're all we're all gonna get through this together. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, I forgot where I was. Well, I was talking about uh, TensorFlow.js. So, oh, and you don't see that now. Let me come back here. So the code that I began to write is as follows. So obviously I, I went through this in greater detail in the previous stream, um, but I've got a node. I'm eventually gonna turn this into a web server, but this is just a node script ultimately right now, a little node project where I'm creating a sequential model that is exactly, I'm trying to recreate this exact model in code now. Um, I'm calling it an autoencoder because that's the application that I'm doing. Um, it starts with an encoder, which is a dense layer that receives 784 inputs because my images are going to be 28 by 28. I'm arbitrarily having it be 32 units. Then it decodes back to 784. Um, it's just those, it's, uh, this is like, it's just two layers, just uh, one layer for the encoder and one layer for the decoder. And then I've set up an optimizer, a loss function. These are things I also talked about in the previous, um, I've only got a minute left here in my recap, so you know I'll, I can touch on those as we go. Um, and then I just fed it with random noise. <laughs> so where I left off is I now would like to, and I have this processing sketch, which generates a variety of, square, of images of squares. Uh, I have those, hopefully if I could find them here, in a folder called data. Um, so now I would like to feed the autoencoder these actual images, expand the number of layers, um, and um, I'm reading the chat. Yeah, so my... Uh, things are complicated these days for me as they are for everybody. My kids are home. I disconnected their internet. My wife is out of town. <laughs> so um, they're having a couple hours of free time. Um, but um, uh, and I wanted to get this out of the way because, oh, oh my God, what is beeping at me? Oh, it's the timer. Do you hear that? I'm like, what's happening? There's a beeper going on. Uh, okay, 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 I got gotcha. you. We're going to get started with the code. Uh, whoops. Um, but and I, I've lost track of what I'm saying. But I've, I've got lots of things to do with them tomorrow, next week through Thanksgiving. And so I was just, if I could just do this stream today, then I can kind of figure everything out next week. So here I am. <laughs> um, hi, Computational Mama in the chat. So um, um, let's see. OK, how are, we, how are we all feeling about that? Any questions about uh, what I've covered so far? Before I get started here, and I'm thinking, I'm going to need to read in the images. How do I want to read in the images? Um, anybody got a suggestion for a node package that I should use? I mean, I could use just the file system package to read the files. Then I need to unpack them into their pixels and turn those into tensors. Oh, Gloria Pickle. Oh, you know what? Now I'm feeling kind of guilty, but she was out all day uh, earlier today with me as I was going around and we had a nice walk. She's in her sleeping in her crate. She's she's crate trained. She loves her crate. She feels very safe in there. If there's ever uh, I'm talking about my dog, now, by the way, not my daughter. <laughs> you guys were confused. My children are free range right now in the house. The dog, I often have her with me, but she's sleeping in her crate. Um, I was about to say, like, um, that's her favorite spot. Like, if there's a thunderstorm, she's terrified. She just wants to be in her crate. So she sleeps in her crate at night. Very comfortable there. But I don't want to leave her there for more than a couple hours. Then I need to let her out after her nap to roam free outside and be here. Okay. Uh, I want to make me some coffee after watching, but don't want to leave the stream. L.A. Noob. Um, I really think L.A. Noob you should uh, make yourself some coffee. You're not gonna miss anything, trust me. <laughs> you have a couple minutes to make some coffee. I really doubt you're gonna miss anything critical. 
All right, did, uh, 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 can you restate what you need to do with the files? OK. I need, I have all these images. I want to load them. So I want to write, let's write some pseudocode. Uh, I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to write a function. I will call it load images. I am going to load all image files in the data folder, read the pixels, convert the pixels to uh, tensors for TFJS. So this is what I need to do. Uh, I know how to do the last stop because I'm familiar with TensorFlow.js. It's stuff that I've done. I know how to load image files in general. I would use the node file system package. Ah, OK, the door opened. You got your phone? You're good? Does it, it'll connect automatically, right? OK. OK. Um, it's a little chilly in there because I didn't turn the heat on. But you can turn the heat on if you want. Um, <laughs> the, the thermostat on the wall, it's a little thing. You just go You're closing the door. OK. <laughs> um, OK, so I could use the file system package. And the file system package allows me to load files. Let's just, what? No, no, just turn it to like 70, where it says 70. I think it's a good number. <laughs> um, so let's see. So let's see. Load, Im uh, read image pixels node.js. Get an array of pixels from an image using node.js. Image pixels, get pixels. I, I just feel like um, GIMP. I could use the GIMP package. This seems promising. JavaScript image manipulation program. An image processing library for a node written entirely in JavaScript with zero dependencies. This is good. Does it support promises? Doesn't look like, using promises, yes. OK, this looks good. There's no, no, so Helmer, yeah, I got to talk about this. No internet, no heat. This is a detached garage, and it is, um, I'm trying to get all of the stuff in here to make it more livable. I mean, we don't live in the garage, but to have some more re loungy, relaxing space. We have a ping pong table to have enough like power and internet to power my coding train stuff. Um, but you know, I don't run the heat in here all day because we're not in here, and that would be very wasteful. Anyway, <laughs> how, how, do, how do you all feel about this GIMP library? I think this is looking good for me. So I am going to give it a try until someone tells me not to do it. npm install GIMP. Uh, yep. So let's run that. So I'm now um, loading this package. OK, great. By the way, I'm always curious. It always says oh, some of the packages are looking for funding. So um, always good to support open source projects. So see there's some of the open source projects that I'm using somehow through these dependencies. Um, maybe I will come back to that later. Um, now, oh, there goes, to see, the heat's on. <laughs> so now that's the boiler going. So hopefully that doesn't mess my audio up too much. Amon in the chat on pixel data in, oh, I can just use TensorFlow.js to load the pixel data. Oh, TF image. That's a great point. OK, I should probably use that. <laughs> great point. OK, so this was interesting to explore. But let's, um, let's look at, I forgot about that. Thank you for that. That is a great note. So let's go to tf.image. Yeah, look at this. But does it load, will it load an image for me? So these are all operations if, hold on. What does it expect? Like it expects an image. Does it expect like, like an image, HTML image element? All 
All right, let's see. Uh, from pixels. Ah, uh, but this is all stuff happening in the from pixels. Yeah. Ah, okay. There is the from pixels function. Oh, but this is all only in the browser. So I'm not in the browser right now. I mean, I could be doing all this in the browser. TF image decode, okay. <laughs> Image.decode. How come I didn't see that? TF image decode. I don't see that as a function. TFIO decode image. Interesting. Oh, but this is TensorFlow, not TF. Yeah, so it doesn't look like some of those that like decoding an image file is present here. Um, it probably wants to work with images from the browser. Check this out. What I just sent should work, says Sorelli. <laughs> so the thing is, like, of course we could improve this later. Um, image data, ah, oh, right. So the parameters are image data, so uh, pixel data, image data, image data. Can I do this in, yeah, this is all canvas stuff. So I'm kind of in headless mode right now. So I sort of feel like Node.js canvas image data. So I could use the node canvas module. So I could use node canvas and then load an image. What's the load image function? Oh, OK. Ah, all right. Maybe I should do that. Maybe that makes sense. Uh, so, all right, this is interesting. Let's try this because the other reason to do this is it'll translate nicely to working in P5. But I'm a little bit skeptical of this working in Node, but I'll give myself a little bit of time. Let's try installing Canvas. So, um, let's comment all this stuff out right now. Come back to it. So, and let's say um, import. How do I do an import with this? Uh, can I do this? Import. How do I do this? Is it like this? <laughs> Could that possibly be right? Uh. <sighs> um, all right, so let's see. Um, import, create, can't, let's just see. Okay, so now let's try uh, load image. Make this an async function. Uh, data square zero zero zero. Yeah, and then let's see what happens. 
So I'm just testing this canvas load image function to see if it will load the file. Um, import um, um, and see what happens. Okay. Is it really called canvas? It's not called node canvas, but okay. Create canvas not found. Um, import, oh, I see. Let's try this. Okay, look at this. Image 28 by 28 data square complete. Huh? Okay. This is interesting. Import star as canvas. I don't think my, my uh, import is right, so hold on. Is this... Does this work? No. I don't know how to use these ES6 imports. So for whatever reason, <laughs> this works, but this is not the correct way to do it. I'll have to revisit that later. <laughs> uh, I'm so used to using require. Okay. so. Um, first of all, let's, just for a minute here, um, I just want to, no, I guess I want to leave tf.js loaded for right now. It, is that what is, it's console logging there? Yeah, okay. So now if I want to load all the images, um, I mean, I could use file system to like figure that out, but I'm just going to hard code this. Um, I have how many? I have a hundred. Um, and then let's make this a template literal. And so, um, how do I do number formatting in Node? Is that native? Oh, there's numeral. All right, let's try numeral. This looks cool. And this might be over overkill for what I need to do, but import load image from canvas. What if I want to import more than one thing? Um, okay. So now, let's see. Uh, uh, how do I use numeral? Uh, import. If I want to like call it uh, NL for numeral, I don't know. Uh, and then NL. Is this this might not actually be format. Okay. Uh, NLI format. Um, This is like the format I want is, ah, so it's, that's the format I want. So now this, I think this should give me <laughs> all of the file names. I to string pad start. Okay, okay. Import ABC from X, yeah. 
Um, thank you for all these helpful tips in the chat. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm running out of space here. Let's see if I can give myself some more room. Okay, so then let's just do console.log image. Let's just do 10 images to start. See if this works. No, 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 no. So numeral I didn't need because I could just do it with string. Um, let's try, did I, did I install numeral? I did. So how come this didn't work? <laughs> Import numeral from numeral, maybe it's that. Load image is not a function. Didn't like this. Port. Oh. I don't know. What did, how did I get, get it working? Okay, so I'm doing things in some awkward, unnecessary ways. Like, first of all, I don't need this numeral package because I could just use like number to string or something, but it works nicely for me. <laughs> and I don't understand why I'm doing it this way. Uh, import load image. Is that? No. I, don't st I still don't understand how ES, I should read up on how these uh, import statements work, but this works. Um, yeah, I tried that, import load image from canvas. All right, look, watch. I, mean, I don't want to get stuck on this stuff, but, right, I believe this should work. And it's not. So you got me as to why that doesn't work, but this is working. OK, so now the question is, can I then, uh, the point of this was to convert them to tensors. Um, now, from pixels, image. Uh, t no, not. Wait. So I've loaded them. But I, the problem is, is with browser. So I don't have a browser. <laughs> I should just have done it the way I was starting to do it. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, that's a good. Um, so just out of curiosity, I'm going to take Sorel's. I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Import. And then I could say. I mean, it's a little bit uh, more verbose. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm lost. But also, how do I convert it now to a tensor? Can I just say? See, this is what I want to do. 
but I don't think it's going to let me. It's not a function. Can I get this to work from node? Just add support to TF from pixels in node. It's from 2018. Yeah. This supposedly This should work according to this. Am I in the wrong version of tf.js somehow? Do I need core? Fix TF from pixels. Yeah, why? Supposedly. TF from pixels is not a function. Must have changed. So let me just see, which version am I using? Three, is this somehow like different? If it's like, it should be fine. No, this is the node version. So did that go away? Oh, TF image, no. I mean, can I just put the browser in there and it'll figure it out? Is it as simple as that? Did I forget just? Pixels passed to TF browser must either be image data in browser. I should go back to my original solution. Oh, TF from pixels was deprecated. <laughs> I should just go back to my original solution. I'm going to go back to my original solution of using GIMP. Because I really don't, I can make a tensor very easily with this small amount of data. We, I, we could come back if there's like a more efficient way of doing this. Let's just go back to GIMP. Or I could probably read the pixels just with node canvas. But, um, um, which might be useful because then, uh, if I want to ever just do this in the browser, but. So let's not do it this way. Well, actually, what if I just, can I just read the pixels here? <laughs> this is what comes up first in my search. Image data, image data dot data. Is it there? Is it there?
Do I have the pixels? No. It's such a weird thing for it to console log. <sighs> yeah, Sean, this is such a good question. I don't really know why I started doing <laughs> I was kind of imagining that at some point I wanted to like process huge amounts of data and like I don't know. There, there's not really a good reason. It's just kind of where I started because it was easier for me to sort of like work it out. Um, and I could just use the file system, like I said. This is sort of silly. I could come back to um, yeah, get image data. So I have to draw it as a guy. Okay. All right. All right. I've gone far enough with this silly way. OK, get array of pixels from an image file. Um, image pixel color, OK. Right, this is where I started. OK, great. So we're going to use promises, and we're going to read. So import GIMP. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's right. Um, and then um, now we should be able to say let's just try this just real quick. Um, and oh no. Let's see what happens here. Jimp.read is not a function. I don't know how to import anything. OK, we got something. Decoders. How do I? OK. Uh, Oh, okay. Instead of using require, ah, there we go. Oh, just as simple as that. Okay. I overcomplicated it. Okay. Oh, and it, look, it drew the, <laughs> it redrew the image. Great. <laughs> okay, so this is working. Uh, let's go back. Boy. Boy, this stuff takes forever. OK, so just to, just to figure out where we are for a moment, and um, I'm going to take a short break in a second um, to check on my daughter <laughs> and uh, talk about Curiosity Stream. But um, this is where we are. Let's see. Um, I am currently just trying to load the image to read the pixels to put it into a tensor. And I'm going to say, this now. Um, and the question is, how do I, where is the GIMP documentation? Contain, scale, autocrop, crop, blit, composite, mask, convolute, flip, pixelate, displace, clone, resize. Well, I'm looking for like pixels. Okay. No. There's got to be a way to just read the pixels directly to get the pixels as an array.
the neighbor pixels. Boy, I'm making this so hard. Let's see if this gives us anything we can use. Data. All right, that's promising. There's get base 64, get buffer, get pixel color. Well, that's kind of useful, but I don't want to go through and get the pixel colors one at a time. Undefined. Wasn't there something called data? Oh, bitmap. Bitmap. Okay. There's the raw data of <laughs> the image. Get buffer. Let's see what this looks like. Mm. Mine must be a string. I got some weird error there. That didn't work. I can't believe how much trouble I'm having getting the pixels. Am I really going to get the pixels one at a time? All right, let's just do it. This is so crazy what I'm doing. Get pixel color, J comma K. Oh, pixels I doesn't even mean anything. Okay, sorry. Um, this is me reconstructing the pixel array. Oh, what? I don't, what are you doing? automating things for me that I don't want you to do. <laughs> this actually makes kind of sense. <laughs> this bit image scan. Hey, wait, Amr is giving me something. Scan? Is that from Jimp? Uh, here's a good reference. Your, your URL probably won't work, Sorrel. Uh, so this is giving me the probably like the integer. Um, this bitmap data. This is in the GIMP documentation. Oh, image.scan. Thank you. Okay. Um, Uh, scan. Ah, scan a region. Image bitmap data. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Let's see. Scan. GIMP enables low level image images in memory through the bitmap property of each GIMP object. Why is the this? So weird. Yeah. Our G 
This is so, I'm, this is so insane how much this is like driving me crazy. <laughs> like how much I'm getting stuck in this. This makes me want to go back to the browser. All right, let's, let's go for this. This is really weird, but scans a region of the bitmap and calls the function f on every pixel. Um, but couldn't I just do this myself? Is the, is the data, hold on a second. Bitmap data, okay. So let me just try something. Let R equal image bitmap data zero. Is it just, can I operate the bitmap like an array? Ah, there we go. <laughs> this was so easy. <laughs> oh, I'm such a dummy. Okay, okay. There we go. So now I can do um, let uh, index equals zero. Index. I'm just gonna. I know it's everything's 28 by 28, so I'm just hard coding it in. You just use n, and then the actual pixel, the actual index is n times 4. The r is, is n plus 0, n plus 1, n plus 2. But I'm not doing an RGB image, so I can just use the r. <laughs> and now if I console log r, I could, oh, I could just use the map function, but I'll raw date. I'm just going to make an array. So I could do some kind of higher order array function to just like do it. And I've got, I could basically turn the bitmap into a tensor directly. But um, since I've got grayscale images, it's probably what I should do actually. But I'm just going to say raw data, um, just for now, raw data uh, n equals r. And then console log raw data. OK, great. So this is all of the raw grayscale values. There we go. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. So now, uh, remember when I was doing this before? I, uh, though these are the x inputs. So this generate image, we returned a function. So um, train model, x train. I'm just sorry, I'm, I'm a little lost here. Oh, OK. So x inputs. So loading all the images, we have x inputs. And then uh, x inputs index i is that raw data. So basically, I'm loading every single image into an array and then putting it in my x inputs array because, and I can take all this other stuff out because, and let's get rid of the random one. Because when it's time to train the, to get the training data, so this, I need a, a curly bracket there to close this out. Then the training data is a tensor out of all of these images. 
Um, and then I'm not going to call train model just yet, but let's sort of see. I is not found. Why is I not found? Oh, right, because this does need to be in here. There we go. Okay, so now that's one image as a tensor. So now I can actually go ahead and load all 100 images. Okay, I loaded 100 images into those tensors. By the way, the reason why you're seeing 255 everywhere is those images are all white around the edges, and all of the, the data that wouldn't be 255 should be dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I need to refactor this stuff. Chris is saying you should make getting the raw data into a separate function. Absolutely. So I will refactor this later. Um, but now I should be able to say await train model. And let's see what happens here. Uh, oh, X-Train is not defined. Oh, because I made that, those global, okay. Well, here, I'm gonna just be very silly about, I need to rethink how all these functions are organized. Remember, this is something I talked about last, last time. This is very weird. Why? or my inputs and my outputs, the training data. This is unique to this autoencoder problem where instead of like an image classification problem where I would have a whole bunch of images paired with their target labels, those images, the, the training, the correct output for each image is that image itself. Okay, let me come over here and So something happened. I don't get what this loss is. It's a negative number. I'm a little confused by that. Um, but this is also so few images. So I think I'm at a good place where now I can just take a short break. I'm going to turn the heat on for a little bit to warm it up in here. <laughs> and so the things that I need to do after I take this short break are let me make more images. Let me think about the hyperparameters and configuration of this network. Like, if I just, like right now, if I just change this to the encoder having 784 units, interesting. I wonder, I need to think about the learning rate. The loss, I don't know what's going on here exactly. I need to rethink the hyperparameters, normalize the data. Thank you, Aman. Ah, why did I forget? Why did I forget that? Thank you. All right, let me do that quickly. So important. <laughs> I forgot to normalize the data. No wonder it's like exploding. There we go, okay. We're getting somewhere. The loss is like a number that makes sense now. It started with 0.683, went all the way down to 0.1. I could try more epochs, but I'm going to get more data. I'm going to, um, you know, just uh, I, I should be able to get a loss of zero essentially if I have 700. Yeah, look at this. Look at that. Oh, the loss is going down. I mean, of course, they've defeated the purpose by not actually compressing the data. But OK, warm it up, Dan. That's what I'm about to do. All right. OK, OK, thank you, thank you. Oh, I forgot to normalize the data. OK, everybody, I'm, I'm really close now. This was a lot, a lot of time that I spent like trying to just figure out how to load the images. Sorry for all of those um, kind of strange tangents and different libraries. This is still kind of awkward and weird. But the fact that the data can be read from the file with GIMP and then the actual pixel information is just in this bitmap.data property, this, this could definitely be improved, but it's getting me all the way there now. OK, so um, um, I want to uh, uh, take a break for a minute. Uh, before I take my break, let me thank today's sponsor. <laughs> Oh, the sponsor. 
Um, this is, uh, uh, the Zay sponsor is Curiosity Stream. And I, I, some of you probably weren't here at the beginning of the live stream where I showed this to you. So Curiosity Stream. I'm just going to quickly play this uh, brief ad for you from Curiosity Stream directly so you can learn all about what Curiosity Stream is. But don't go away because after I play this, I'm going to talk to you about why you should sign up through my link, Coding Trained, to get access to some extra cool stuff from another thing called Nebula. So just hold your horses. Here we go. From the founder of Discovery Channel comes a new independent streaming service, Curiosity Stream, home of groundbreaking documentaries and award-winning original series. Follow your curiosity. This is Curiosity Stream. Oh, I'm really, I'm so getting fired. <laughs> I know, okay. okay, so I'm talking to, so at least that. <laughs> start over, start over. I'm exit, exit stage right, I'm coming back. Don't make, don't make, don't, don't, everybody sign up so don't get fired. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, you just saw that wonderful 30 second promo about Curiosity Stream, which is one of my favorite streaming services because it is chock full of so many wonderful educational documentaries. The things that I like to watch the most is all the nature stuff. Um, so we can see here just realm of the Volga. Whoa, the Volga flows 2,000 miles. Oh, I've got to check this one out. Um, I was just saying that um, one of the ones that I uh, have watched with my kids that I really love, which was under here under kids, is Ancient Earth which is uh, all about life that existed in the Permian, Triassic, and Crit Cretaceous periods. So, uh, right, and Hoodoo says, even without the sound, I want to watch that Sea Lions show. So just curiosity stream, if you sign up through my link, and I believe if I go slash coding train, it'll sort of show us that. Yeah. Oh, uh, because I'm already logged in. So um, if I wasn't logged in, it would have a nice little banner at the top that says, you get 26% off of the annual uh, subscription. That comes to $14.79. It's barely over a dollar. Uh, barely over a dollar per month <laughs> at $14.79 for the entire year. But I think the thing that I really want to tell you that I'm really excited about is this is a bundle. So if you sign up for Curiosity Stream bundle through the link, you will also get access to Nebula. So Nebula is a streaming service built by YouTube creators. Um, many of my favorites here. If I go to my library, there's some that I'm following. Um, Renee Ritchie, um, if you like AI and want uh, machine learning, want to learn more about machine learning, you should definitely be checking out Jordan Harrod's videos. There's some other ones that are here um, in my, and look at this. All of these uh, Daniel Schiffman coding train videos. And in particular, one of the things that you get with Nebula is early access. And so this is a video that isn't yet out on the channel, will be hopefully tomorrow if you want early access to it. The full, um, um, <laughs> the full, um, if you want early access to it, you'll, you'll get that through the Nebula bundle. So, so many wonderful creators. Um, the other thing, the, the, you know, a lot of this stuff is also on YouTube, but it's without ads on Nebula. Um, and um, there are all these wonderful Nebula originals. So um, this is a really awesome, um, uh, like, compilation of different creators. I, I, I wonder if I could make one of these, I don't know, but each uh, different creators on YouTube, they're all making videos about the opening title sequences of different um, television shows. So um, 
You can see Renee Ritchie did one about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We've got Soph's Notes one about Pokemon. Ooh, I've got to check this out. So all these, these originals are really um, just wonderful. I'm just like poking through to look for some other ones. Um, um, a big fan of Legal Eagle. So you got this, I love this bad law, words good. So, uh, um, so Mikhail is asking, did he say built by YouTube creators or YouTube's creators? No. Built by creators. So everyone that you see here on Nebula participated in the making of Nebula itself. Um, and um, um, it, you know, uh, this isn't really true for me, but I know that one of the benefits for many YouTube creators of Nebula is certain kinds of content. A lot of the um, like historical um, um, videos, um, that um, certain kinds of content can't be on YouTube. It will get demonetized or it will get sort of, um, uh, uh, just if it's about a kind, of, a kind of topic like about you know, World War II, for example. So um, uh, I'm not saying this very eloquently, but creators are free basically on, to publish certain kinds of videos on Nebula that would, might cause them issues on YouTube itself. So that's one of the motivations of, as well as all these originals uh, about being able to have no ads. So you can get this for free. <laughs> Not for free. Well, you, you get it for free if you sign up for the, oh, oh, I'm so being going to get fired. <laughs> I'm, I'm really basically like, I, I, I'm just, I just got a cop to it. Today has been such a mess for me. I had this all planned out this morning. I had everything I knew I wanted to say and do in this live stream. I really do love this service Nebula. Um, I participated in it. I'm, I'm, it's, it's meaningful to me. And it's like, as I get to become, uh, spend more and more time on Coding Train, I'm really hoping that come this January, I'm going to be able to dive more into um, Nebula and make some, maybe make a Nebula original myself. So if you want to get involved, learn more about it. Also support the Coding Train itself. Get access to this incredible library of documentaries. <laughs> you can go right now to um, curiositystream.com slash coding train. That's the link right there, curiositystream.com slash coding train. Um, thank you everybody for uh, tolerating this like really terrible sponsor read. I'm gonna do better next time. I'm gonna take a, like, a two or three minute break. You can sign up now if you have nothing to do in this two or three minutes. I'll be right back to finish off this auto encoder project. <laughs> I'm gonna go feel bad about myself over there now. Be right back. All right, I have returned. I took some deep breaths, did a very short 20 second meditation. <laughs> and <laughs> John says, well, you got me to sign up so you didn't do too badly. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Um, there were those, those pity signups. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, all right, let me get back into what we're all here for, which is my building of an auto encoder. All right, so I think we're really close here to actually seeing some images generated from the auto encoder. Now, if I wanted to go all the way through with this, I would, I want to eventually reconnect this back to the browser itself. I mean, maybe I should just have the model in the browser. I don't really need a node server. So it's maybe, um, maybe run the training in the browser. I'm not really sure where I want to go with this ultimately, <laughs> it so turns out. But I do want to see the results of the autoencoder in the browser and start to understand how to manipulate the latent space. But my goal for today, given that I would like to wrap this up in about 20 to 30 minutes, <laughs> is to simply see an image generated from the autoencoder, even just one. So I'm trying to decide. I think it would be worth me putting in a few more layers. Um, so I mean, I suppose I, maybe I don't need to worry about improving this so much. And let's just work with what I've got which is 100 images. Um, let's see what happens if I give it 100 epochs. And I'm just going to go down. I'm going to compress the 784 pixels down to 64. Oh, and Mikhail is asking a great, great question. In his image loading, he's normalizing the pixels to between 0 and 1, but all the TF tutorials I've seen use negative 1 to 1. Is there any practical difference or just personal preference? I would love to know the answer to that question. Um, I think at the moment, because I'm using this output, um, I'm using the sigmoid function as the output activation function, it's got to be between 0 and 1, because the, um, the outputs are only going to be between 0 and 1 with sigmoid. But if I were using tan h, then I could have outputs between negative one and one. Has to do with the, um, so, but again, I'm kind of flying blind, fl I'm, I'm just sort of like throwing all the spaghetti at the wall <laughs> and to see what sticks, just trying to get something working and then I can go back and kind of fine tune more thoughtfully. Um, I don't need to print this out anymore. Let's just try uh, training this. Let's see what happens with the loss. So the law seems to settle at, um, with, uh, at probably settled around 100 epochs at 0 0.07. That's great. So could I now, if I wanted to generate an image from this, let's go back to the original. So I, I'm done with sort of like part two and a half of three parts. If this is in three parts, part one was just building the autoencoder, giving it noisy data. Part 2a was getting actual data into the autoencoder. Part 2b is looking at the results of the autoencoder after it's been trained. So if I'm coming back to this, what did, uh, what did this tutorial do? And I'm, I'm not having any test data. Yeah, right. This is also, by the way, normalizing between 0 and 1. Uh, decoded images. Oh, using predict. OK. So if I can use predict to see, OK, great. So let's do this. Let's follow this. So I want to use predict. L let's refactor this a little bit to make it less weird. OK? So <laughs> also known as the scientific method, yeah. Um, so let's, let's get a little bit better here. So basically, I want to have a fun. I'm going to write a function called like main, which is a little bit silly. Function, 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 um, and it's going to be an async function. And the things that I'm going to do in it are load all image data, convert image data to a tensor. Train the model. Uh, 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 test the model. So I've done everything but this last step of test the model. 
So this async function load images, I can just say return x inputs. So let's just call this um, all images. And return all images. So first thing I'm going to say is const images equals await load images. Okay. Then, and there was a question about why this is a 2D tensor. We'll talk about that. If the data is flattened into one dimension, I will talk about that in a moment. So let's do this. Does this need an await? No, it doesn't. So that's the trading data. I should save some to be testing data, but I'll just not worry about that later. I'm just going to reuse. This is a very bad idea, very bad idea, but I'm going to reuse some of the training data for my testing of the model. We could separate out. We can get new data later, I, I promise. Um, um, and then training the model is as follows. Let's write a function called async train model. And we're going to get data in. So we're going to say await async function, await train model with x train. And then is autoencoder still just a global variable? Yeah. So, you know, it would make sense for me also to have a um, function that is build model. So basically, well, autoencoder is a sequential model. The build model function puts all the stuff into it. Why? I'm, I'm, so I should be calling build model first. Model. What did I do wrong here? There we go. So let's bring this up here. It's, um, build model auto encoder. Again, I'm not so sure this really makes a lot of sense the way I'm doing this. So now I need to pass this as arguments. <laughs> this is pretty arbitrary what I'm doing. But I'm trying to get rid of sort of global variables. And so now I've created the sequential model. I think actually I'd like to do this. then return it. So what am I doing? I am build the model, load the image data, convert the image data to a tensor so that I can train the model with that data. Then, and let's just make sure this all still runs. Oh, oh. I think I have to call this function. All right, so I'm, everything still works. Everything still works. Training the model. 
Then I would like to test the model. So I need one image. So all the images are here. So what I could do, let's do the following. Let's be a little more rigorous about this. I'm going to rerun my uh, training data creation and make 500 images, 550 images. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong. Let me, let me make, I'm going to make 550 images. Okay, they're all squares. Okay, we're almost there. Making 550 squares. All done. I'm going to get this data. I'm going to bring it into um, the autoencoder project. Going to replace it. And I'm going to rerun this sketch. It's not a sketch, but <laughs> rerun this code. Uh, with, uh, I'm going to put an argument in here, uh, with, for 500 images. Let's just see how this goes. Ooh, loss is getting better. Well, I've got 500 images. I'm able to get the loss much further down, although it seems to have settled by the time I'm at like 100 epochs. So certainly there's not a huge reason for me to train it for, long, for that long. Let's just say 75 to make things run faster. Um, and I think actually what I want to do is load all 550, but I want to take out just a slice of them, right? So how do you do a slice JavaScript array? Slice returns a shallow copy of a portion array into a new array object. So if I wanted just 500, I would do this. And then if I want to do test, x test, I could create a tensor out of those same images, but slice from 500 to 550, right? Um, let's skip. Um, let's skip training the model for a second. Okay. All right. Right. So this makes sense. I've got 500 training images. 50 test images. So now, I should be able to say, uh, auto encoder predict x test. Let's see. Uh, after it's trained. Is that all I need to do? Predict encoded images. Oh, it's got the encoder and the decoder as separate things. Oh, it made two separate, it made an encoder model. Anyway, I'm going to do this my own way. <laughs> Because uh, eventually I want to like chop off the encoder and just feed in noise from the that middle layer. But let's just sort of see what happens here. So I'm training, and then aha! Look, look, look! We're getting images out. Yes. Now we just need to turn those into. Um, now we just need to turn those into images. I bet you Jimp will do that for us. So how do I uh, write a new image? By the way, it's freezing in here. 
create an image and write it in a text. Uh, yeah, can I make a new image? Okay, can I, can I set the pixels? Oh, we're about to find out. Whew. <laughs> it, this, this, this frozen mountain behind me is no joke. I should really just turn the heat on in here. But normally what I do is I warm it up before, <laughs> before I stream. <laughs> but I thought I wasn't going to. I can't believe this is working. Okay, so um, I need to uh, get the data. So back to TensorFlow.js. Uh, where are we? Back to TensorFlow.js, TF data array. No, how do I get the, the tensor? TF tensor uh, TF image ones can't isn't there like how do I get the data data this is what I want gives me the data oh but I can actually just get it as an array returns the tensor data as a nested array okay so const uh, it, did I already use the word images? Yeah, like new images equals output uh, array, await. Let me just do console log new images index zero. It's a little silly that I'm training the model every single time, <laughs> but okay, great. So now I got an array of 784 pixel values. So I should be able to say, you know, I could use base64 encoding probably as a way as writing the images, but this is fine. Um, and let's just do it with just one. So now what I'm doing is I want to say um, image equals jimp, equals it create. Would really help if I really knew jimp. Writing text. How do I create an image? Oh man. New Jimp. Oh, maybe just this. Oh, okay. Creating new images. Here we go. Okay, you can call the gym constructor. Can I do this with buffer, data buffer, raw image buffer? Four channel RGBA image data, okay. Just now, can I do a wait? So I'm making it. What if I just make the buffer? How do I do that thing where I like fill an array? <laughs> yeah, all right, so, um, all right, let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, buffer is an array, and then for n equals zero, n is less than new images index i dot length, n plus plus, buffer index n,
n times 4 plus 0, right, is, is new images in, okay, so current is new images index i. Um, so if basically I want to take all of those values, and expand them back out by 255. The reason why I'm multiplying by 4 is I, I, I took my grayscale image of RGBA and made it just like one value. So now I'm paying for that because I've got to expand it back out to four values. And this one should always just be 255, so there's no alpha transparency. And these are, this is just putting whatever that value is in the RGB channels. And then I should be able to um, make a new image. And then how do I sit, write the file? Write image, write, um, write. I should be able to say image.write test.png. Now that's gonna, let's just do it with one. It's, I'm just doing it with one image, so it's fine. <laughs> Obviously I need to number these. I'll get to that. And let's just see if uh, output, okay. Let's just see what's happened. I, I'm sure I mess, missed something important. <laughs> okay, uh, the first argument must be of type string or instance of buffer, array, buffer, array, array-like object, receive null. Where? So close to having this working. What did I miss? Uh, console log buffer. Uh, let's just take a look at it. Let's also, I'm just going to train the model for um, and let's let's put the number of epochs in here. Just do ten epochs, so I can like test this more quickly. Okay, so now I should be able to see the buffer after ten epochs. Almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done. Okay, this is the buffer. That looks right. Oh, maybe I can't use a weight here. No matching. So maybe maybe a weight doesn't work. I need to follow um, follow its. Um, callback methodology. Let's see what happens here. What is it? That last argument is error image. the function. I'm a little lost now. A little lost in my syntax. New jimp and the arguments are, oh this is first. Oh this is a separate argument. doesn't go in there. Okay. So it does not go in this object. There we go. Okay. Image. And what if I actually just did it just as a test Well, okay, let's try it with the data buffer. Data buffer error image, and then if I said image right. Let's see if this works. Okay, here we go. OK, 
cannot read properties of undefined. We're going to get there, folks. No matching constructor overloading was found. Do I need to round my output values to integers? I don't think that should matter. But yeah, I could see how that's an issue. Oh, floor is not defined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's just try um, this for a second. Let's see if I can get a red image. Oh, by the way, there's something here. Oh, nothing is there. Uh, just now, I'm, I'm not trying to use my actual data from the neural network. <laughs> I just literally put the GIMP code to draw a red image that's 256 by 256 there, just to know that this works. OK? Now, do we have a red image? Yes, oh, or pink. OK, so image writing out does work. Now, the question is, what if I, how do I fill, create the buffer correctly? So if I wanted to follow, so why does this not work? And this does. Um, data, I mean, I must not have made the buffer correctly. Buffer. Buffer is expected to be a four-channel RGBA image data, yeah, which is not just a plain array. See so if we can find an example. Yeah. Yeah, look, here's the error. Huh. Other people are finding this error. Cannot create new Jim from buffer. <laughs> okay. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work. <sighs> buffer from array. OK, ah, Chris Manning says buffer from array. OK. <laughs> Fingers crossed, emoji. <laughs> What? Oh. Oh, I think that worked. I mean, oh, but I didn't write the image. I think that worked. Oh, I think that worked. Oh, this is very exciting. I think that might have worked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I've never been so excited to see a total like noise nonsense image. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Um, okay, wait, 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 wait. All right, so now, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, I need to train the model better. <laughs> and then, okay, so what do I need to do? This I can get rid of. I need to train the model with more epochs. Let's do 100 epochs. Then, where was my crazy numeral thing I did? Um, to, to, let's find that, yeah. Then I need to save it. Um, so what am I, am I in N, am I in I? I don't even remember. I'm in I still. I, output, uh, square, uh, num, dot png. Okay, so this should do, so now basically I am, and I should do all of them. So new images dot length. And I've got a lot of, con like these prints here that I don't need. Okay, so what this should be doing now, and um, and I should call, I, I have this main function. Let's take this out. Let's do, oh, and this should say await. Oh, no, it doesn't need an await. It only needs an await if I'm converting it to uh, data that I can actually use. That's interesting. So hold on. So this is the train data. This is loading all, then I'm taking 500 images to train it with. Then testing the model, I'm going to say await generate generate tests. And I want to give it the auto encoder and the test data. So this should all be in its own function, which is an async function generate tests which gets the autoencoder and the test data. And then writes it out. Okay. So there we go. These are the steps now. Right? Build the model, load all of the images, train the model, test the model. So train the model with 500 images, test the model with 50 images. Okay, right everybody? This definitely merits a Here we go. Oh, by the way, it's funny how this poll is still up. I'm going to hit end poll. Yes, thank you to Chris Ray. Train whistle for Chris Ray. Here we go. Huh? I mean, did it write all those images out that fast? I find that hard to believe. It looks like it, no, that's, what? Oops, <laughs> I couldn't, output. Oh yeah, it did. But something is wacky. My images don't look anything like what was fed into them. <laughs> oh shoot. What could I have done wrong? Oh, we got everything to work. Just looking at this, so in getting the output, I mean, to be fair, this model is kind of ridiculous. What if I go back to my just like, let it like literally copy everything? Oops. Q. 
can't tell if it re did it regenerate the output. I mean, maybe I need to rethink my model. Yeah, no. What is going on? I mean, there's images there. It's outputting a zoomed in square. You have set it to 28 pixels width and height, I think, yeah? Did you write the pixels out in the same order you read them in? Not necessarily. So let's think about this. This is me reading the images, the data in. And then it should be seven eighty four. This is very silly how I have to run through a hundred epochs of training this model just to yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> just to see that that number was seven eighty four. I am not reading the Discord chat. chat. Um, Simon is saying, uh, maybe you should add more layers. I don't think you did anything wrong. I think the model is just bad. More layers. Okay. I believe in, I believe that could be, that that is the case. Okay, let's, let's, let's add more layers. Um, so... Let's do it. Let's do it by half. So 784 divided by 2 is 392. Let's just let's just use powers of 2. So, so let's start with should I be using relu for all the encoder activation functions? So let's just do encoder 1. Encoder 2 is, I don't need the input shape anymore, uh, is 128. And then decoder 1 would be 256. And again, this is a little bit silly now. I don't need to name all of them. I could just do um, um, decoder 2 is 784. Okay. So, and let me be a little bit more, I think it'll be nicer actually. I don't need to, I'm just going to add them in directly. So let's add in add in this layer. Then add in another layer. And then, I wonder if there's a nicer way to write this, but I'm just going to do this like this. Another layer. And another layer. Back to 784. Okay? So we're putting in... Um, You should take one of your input images, create the buffer the exact same way you are with the output. Yeah, that's a very good idea, Chris Manning. I will do that. <laughs> I'm also going to do that. So here are my layers. The first layer gets 784 down to 256, then down to 128, then back up to 256, then back up to 784, and out. And I don't need this anymore. So let's see how this does. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
351, yeah. So, okay. So let me do, I, let's, do um, let's do some JIMP tests. So I'm going to do test.js. So I've got too much stuff going on here to really know what's happening. So let me do the following. I'm going to take, I'm in, my, in this test, I'm going to just get rid of um, everything but JIMP. And get rid of all the TensorFlow stuff just for a second. So I want to. Oh, I lost some stuff. So I want to uh, test images. So let's uh, test images one. So I'm going to read the image. I'm going to get the raw data. Then let's try writing the image back out um, to make sure that actually works the way I expected it to. So now that I have the raw data, this is, this is the equivalent of raw data to expand it back out and write the image out. So let us get rid of output. So this should just be a nice little test to read one image in and write it back out, just to make sure that that actually works. Probably takes longer to train, says K Weekman, yeah. Um, so let's just do no test, image write. Oh. What's going on here? Oh, there's a mistake here. There's a mistake here. N times four, I'm using N to pull the colors. That should be index. Whoa. Whoa, that's a huge mistake that I've just caught right now. Any idea what the batch size should be? Also, this is so arbitrary. Let's just say 32. I'm going to make that lower because I don't have that much data. Look at this. This is a huge error. Huge error. Huge error. Huge error. <laughs> I think that might actually be, I might have just found the issue. I feel I need more time to train. But we could actually look at what just came out. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> I did it. I did it. It worked. Look what comes out. Look at that. That is beautiful. Beautiful. Be Auto encoder worked. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 This is way too exciting. Hold on. Hold on. Everybody, just everybody relax. <sighs> Okay, this is really exciting. Okay, um, now I, I have to wrap up. I'm way over time. There's so much more that could be done to this. Part three, I'm, maybe will come at some point. Maybe this will all get edited into some video and I'll narrate it. Who knows? I have no idea. But what I want to do is a couple things. One, let's train it for much longer. Where's the training? Oh yeah, I just want to see. Let's give it 200 epochs. I just want to see, like, when does the loss stop going down? It's still going down.
I mean, eventually I need to just save the model and not do this every time. <laughs> but I just want to see. I want to see if I can denoise some images. So where are we? Yeah, I mean, so 250, we'll do 250 epochs. So what I would like to do actually now, just as an experiment, is let me make a bunch of images with a lot of noise in them. So um, let's do this. Uh, point So I'm just adding a lot of noise into the image. Maybe I need to add more. Let's add a lot more. Okay, so I'm going to make a whole bunch with uh, that are very noisy. <laughs> I'm just going to take the last 50. Just going to take the last 50. Um, where's the processing sketch? That's not right. Here it is. So I just need 500 to 549, right? Do these look even noisy? Hold on, let's look at some of these. Oh, you know what? In the sampling down of it, the noise is really gone. So let's do um, this. This will be better, I think. This is so silly what I'm doing, but it's fine. Uh, this might be too noisy, but let's... Uh, Let's give it a whirl. OK, so I'm going to take these, just these last 49 images, and I put them in here. Apply to all, replace. So just so we're clear, the first 499 images right? if we were looking at these, right? These are just plain squares. But then my test images look like this. Can I denoise these images with my autoencoder? We're about to find out. <laughs> so I'm now training the model off the first 499 images, letting it kind of the loss get down as low as I can get it. And then we're going to look at what came out. Um, so the output is, uh, the output has the noise in it. Is it, we, should, we need to compare it one to one. So that's, it's a little less noisy. Wouldn't you say? Right? These are the two. It's slightly denoised. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so, this is not the application that I'm looking to do. What I would like to do, and I think I'll have to wait for part three, is I want to, first of all, bump up the resolution a little bit, perhaps. Um, 
Then, it looks like it smoothed the noise, yeah. Um, no, I didn't train with the, mini, mini Jimmy says the output has the noise because the noisy pictures were trained at the end. I shouldn't have got, those shouldn't have been part of the training. The way I've written the code is I'm only training it with the first 500 images. So it shouldn't have any of the, and I just put in the last 50. So if I manipulated my files correctly, um, in terms of the input images, there should be no noise all the way just all the way until 499. And then they should be noisy. So these are the training images, and then these are the test images. Um, something happened with the loss and acceleration. Yeah. So uh, let's <laughs> let me post this code. Um, um, let's see, I don't want this JPEG. I'm going to do a couple things. One is uh, no JPEGs. Let me also get the training data generator into um, here. So this should be, so I'm adding, and that test file I don't need anymore because I just wasn't sure about, I mean, but I'll leave that in there. So git ignore index package. Could it be pulling in image 500? That might be an issue. <laughs> I don't think so though. Oh, they should be part of the training versus no noise in the target. Yeah, that's interesting. Right, that makes more sense. Um, so, uh, yes, and so now um, code after part two. Now I'm pushing it. I got to go to the grocery stores. It's not, it's not five o'clock yet, is it? Oh, it's four o'clock. Okay, I'm way over time here. Um, I'm sorry, looking at my, oh, <laughs> text messages. Okay, more epochs. I don't think it's going to get down below. But so, so there's so much that could be done to improve this. This is just a start. Here are some suggestions if anybody wants to pick up and continue this. I'll try to come back and do this part three. Number one is, you know, I kind of haven't been too thoughtful about the layers I'm putting in here um, in terms of the number of units, what activation functions I'm doing, and um, this kind of stuff. <laughs> so I would love for any of you who's interested to sort of play around with this, see what kind of results you get. Ultimately, what I would like to do is take this model and be able to start feeding in data just from here. Um, so I want to take random data and um, um, I, I basically want to start looking at this as a way to browse the uh, latent space. To, as, and the other thing is like this is just a plain vanilla autoencoder um, and there is something called a variational autoencoder. So what would I need to do to this? to make it from a just this sort of like beginner starting point autoencoder and make a variational autoencoder. I would like to know. Um, right, and Simon is saying you didn't get to generating new images with the decoder only. So that's got to be in part three. <laughs> so if you would like to pick this up and run with it on your own, you can go to github.com slash coding train. You can uh, come here and check out the autoencoder demo. I would take, I probably wouldn't, I'm not looking right now for pull requests that improve this um, because I want to build, keep improving it on my own, but I 100% would accept a pull request that adds a readme file that documents all this, links to the live streams, etc. cetera. Um, and I would accept uh, issues that propose improvements or document and li you know, link to your own version of it. So I'll try to come back at some point. It's probably going to be December. This is probably going to be the last live stream for November. Uh, you know, as I said, if you wanted to watch my newest video, <laughs> uh, 
uh, right? If you want to watch my newest video, all you need to do is go sign up for the CuriosityStream and Nebula bundle, curiositystream.com slash coding train, 26% off. Yeah, adversarial autoencoder, says Andrea. That's what I should be doing, but I, I'm doing this very slowly. <laughs> so one step at a time. Um, so, uh, if, but this new video also should be out on YouTube itself tomorrow, or hopefully at least by Monday, sometime very, very soon. Huge shout out to Tim uh, Rodenbroker, who donated to the Processing Foundation fundraiser, to, which uh, inspired this video. Uh, thank you to the sponsor, CuriosityStream, <laughs> uh, curiositystream.com slash coding train, tons of wonderful documentaries, um, as well as access, full access to uh, the Nebula streaming service. All right, so this wraps up my uh, demonstration, explanation, attempts at autoencoder. We've got autoencoder part two done. I'm going to put on a sweater, I'm going to turn on the heat, I'm going to plug the internet back into the house, I'm going to go work on uh, answering my students' emails, make some dinner <laughs> for my children, and I really appreciate everybody here uh, participating in this, cheering me on. I'm very excited that this actually works. Um, so more soon, all right? Goodbye, everybody. See you next time on The Coding Train. <laughs> Uh, I can't find my music. Uh, here we go. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, song, this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do the this dot. This dot. This dot. This dot. The this dot song. Never forget the this dot. <laughs> Somebody compose that song for me. I'm gonna say once again. Here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward to our team. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. <clears throat> Auto tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs.
Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that. Look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. I feel just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's gonna be okay today. Dream is not broken, it has not frozen. This is a this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're gonna do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. Syntax I forgot. Uh, there was one other thing here that I think is important that I will use continuously over and over again. All sorts of text generation analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is... Yes, kittens. Kittens, kittens. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and 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 kittens and